Okay, one of the challenges in uh, hooking up uh, two 12K inverters is fitting all these large CTs. When we have four aught, there's just not a lot of room in the panel. So I got three of them in here, and I put one down in the wiring trough. I am also made my contact between my line side tap here and here to get them to fit. So pretty challenging, tight bends, a lot of fun here, but I think I got everything and I've got continuity, right, Elijah? Elijah's helping me go back here. We just pierced, so we want to make sure that we're having good contact here. So touch that terminal. All right, got it? All right. You're, the, you're not pushing. There you go. Now go to the other one. Great. So now we know we've made... Our contact and our connections to the grid side we run our neutrals and now we've got to get these CTs fished through to the inverters so anyway oh and we got this is a fusible disconnect when you do a line side tap so the tap is on the line side the meter base side of the breaker and then this is the load side so we are, this is the 200 amp fuse disconnect between the grid and the Solark inverters. It goes to a combiner panel before it goes to the inverters. And uh, so I think we've got all our AC side done. It's just hard to fit these large clunky CTs. I couldn't get four of them in there. I got one down here. So one line side tap and one CT made it there. And I got three and one up here. But we're in the right location and... All right, let's uh, button this up and land these CT wires. Okay, we're um, getting to the point where we're landing our final wires for our system with a stacked 12K. What I mean by stacked or paralleled inverters are um, just that. They're um, two that are working together. They're connected by this CAT 5E or CAT 6 uh, cable and you follow the manual as to which uh, ethernet port to plug into. In this user defined area from left to right we have our batteries negative and positive you don't want to mess those up and we'll tell you don't hook them up backwards and it's pretty obvious. External breaker here keep it off till you're ready then your solar your two MPPT trackers you have four connections there four connections here positive positive negative negative positive positive negative negative so we have a um, string of 9, string of 8, and a string of 9 on this inverter. On this inverter, same deal, except we got 8, 9, 8. And we had 51 panels, 17.6 kW coming into this on six separate strings. And then we have, um, so there's the, the DC side of things, the battery, the solar, and then we have um, this terminal strip here. There's a lot going on on this. This is kind of the, the brains, the controls of the system. So we've got temperature set, a temperature sensor probe. Pick that one up, would you please, so I could show them. The end. Um, and then uh, Elijah, my helper, is here with me today. So you put this temperature probe near the battery or tape to the side of the battery, kind of towards the center of the battery bank. So all charging algorithms will factor into the temperature of the battery. So um, that's what that is for. That's terminals one and two. Then terminals three, four, five, and six are for the CTs on lines one and line two. When you set your modes, uh, whether it's limited power to home, load, our grid tie cell you want to make sure that your CTs are it's this is how the inverter communicates with the CTs and uh, does its different modes zero export time of use all those good things then the next thing we have here on here we go to 9 and 10 which is my gen start so I have a two wire start control here for my Cummins generator based on the state of charge of the battery and then uh, there's a CAN bus control which we're not using on uh, let me see, I'm sorry 
There's generator power signal, generator start signal. Okay, we don't use 11 and 12. I haven't ever used 11 and 12. I'll have to investigate that. Then on the AC side, a lot of people say, why don't you separate your AC and DC? Very hard to do when you have a device that has everything in there. Um, so breaker on the left is your critical loads breaker. That's going to be feeding this combiner because this breaker, uh, this inverter also feeds that. So I can take out 66 amps continuous and a grid down. Then I have my grid breaker, which is a bi-directional breaker. And then I have my gen or AC coupled or smart load. I'm using it for a generator. I am bringing a generator power into this power distribution block, blocks, and then splitting between my two generators. So both generators can charge if need be. Um, so this is really prepping for a very large battery bank. At this point we're starting off with a very small battery bank. We're using just four PCC 230s to basically get this system up and running and working. Eventually the homeowner will have to or should add some more batteries because a very small battery bank in comparison to everything else that has been done. So all the breakers are off. Disconnect is off. That's the PV disconnect underneath. The Wi-Fi stick or Wi-Fi dongle here. So we have two identical inverters and this will be the master and this is the slave. So I just wanted to show you kind of the guts of these inverters and um, and now I'm just uh, running battery cables. We run 4 out heavy duty, and that's as big as you can get in there. And it barely, barely, they barely fit. So we'll be setting up the battery here soon. Okay, just turning the battery system on for the first time, and voila, we have lights. Good job, Eli. Yeah. So we're just, uh, we're not going to kill the battery. We're just running some LED lights here on the critical loads panel. And uh, so we're... We're pretty happy with that. Power in this panel right now. Power to lights. Woo, a whole receptacle. Uh, <laughs> good job. Good job. So we just wanted to make sure we got everything connected at the end of the day. <clears throat> a lot of things were connected. CTs and, oh my goodness, all the sensors and rapid shutdown units. So we're going to wrap it up here Saturday evening and uh, take a break from this thing. We'll be back next week. Okay, okay, that was a little challenging. What we ended up doing is uh, paralleling these. One thing I realized in the manual, well, found out that these were supposed to be in ports one and port one. Ah, and that's not what the manual said, but that's okay. Got that resolved. And then we are set up here with the battery. Hopefully, I'm just checking my settings. And we are off. Okay, so I got it. I do have to change so make sure you check all your menus make sure that everything is correct battery setup charge rate I'm using the generator and or grid I'm using the master to control the startup of the generator so we're about to test that and uh, we'll see what happens there okay but we are in parallel mode inverters on normal and we are, this is the master, I can show you that basic setup, parallel, this is the slave, setup is number two, and this one is the, hello, parallel master number one, phase A. Okay, now it's time to do some battery charging, because this battery needs some charging.